Hi. Can you all hear me? Yes? Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, I wanted to share a dream I had decades ago. In this dream, I saw a house on a small hill overlooking a pond with a river flowing past in a wooded valley surrounded by white-capped mountains, and the area was full of wildlife. To turn that dream into a reality, my husband and I have traveled around the world. From the Rocky Mountains in Colorado of the USA, to the Hawaiian Islands in the Pacific, to the Holy Himalaya in North India. But it wasn't until we came south to the Western Ghats region that we found the place that could turn my dream into reality. It was my husband who actually found the first 55 acres that make up the heart, the very core of what is today Sai Sanctuary. And over the decades, piece by piece by piece by piece has come into the sanctuary's fold so that today over 300 acres are under Sai Sanctuary's protection. Thanks. Thanks. So now I actually do live in the house on the small hill overlooking a pond with the river flowing past in a wooded valley surrounded by white-capped mountains. The white caps from, come from the mist and the clouds during the monsoon season. And the area is indeed filled with wildlife. This then is our home, Sai Sanctuary. But we share our home with all the different species there, whether they live in our rivers and our ponds, or whether they fly through the air like the birds and the butterflies. With some butterflies, you don't even realize they are butterflies because of their camouflage until they open their wings. To various kinds of insects, including some that have some pretty amazing camouflage themselves. Snakes, highly threatened species like this no goody marten, rescued wildlife that is brought to the sanctuary for release back into the wild. Predators like this rare leopard cat and larger predators and larger still. We also have a lot of prey species and grass eaters, like this little mouse deer, and then larger and larger and extra large and jumbo size. We share with them all, and they share with us. So as the wildlife plays hide and seek with us in the forest, we're reminded that the wildlife need forests for their home. But sometimes we forget that the forests need the wildlife just as much. They need the wildlife in order to recycle nutrients, to protect them from parasites, for pollination of flowers, and for propagation of trees through dispersal of seeds. The key propagator and protector of the forest is the elephant. Recent studies have shown that elephants are absolutely vital, crucial to protection and spreading of our forest cover. And the reason why is this. This is fresh elephant dung. And if you look closely in the dung, you'll see those seeds there. The dung is filled with seeds. Those big white seeds happen to be from the jackfruit tree. And as these great landscape elephants 
roam through the area, going as far as 100 kilometers in just a, few, a couple of days, they deposit the seeds on their way, thereby regenerating the forest and expanding it as well. So we can see how critically important the elephants are. The, far, the wildlife comes to our sanctuary because of the water we have there. And there is abundant water. But the water is actually a reflection of the trees, of the great canopy of trees we have here. Because it is the trees that actually are responsible for the water. This is because air that passes over forested areas produces twice as much rainfall and can actually increase rainfall thousands of kilometers away. The reason is because the forest itself makes the rain. This happens in two processes. One is the process of transpiration. Through the roots deep in the ground, water is drawn up through the roots through the trunk, out the trees, uh, uh, branches, and into the leaves where it is let off as water vapor. Then the forest itself feeds the air with a potassium salt. This salt becomes the nucleus around which the water vapor coalesces to turn it into raindrops. This is why we now know that over 50% of our rainfall comes from the forest itself. Now we understand more about the importance of forests. They are literally the cradles of all life-giving water. And we also understand more about the symbiotic relationships between plants and animals and between the various species keeping nature in balance. And when nature is in balance, we have natural abundance. But today, that abundance is under threat. The forests of the Western Ghats are disappearing. Indeed, all of India's forests are disappearing. This is causing a tremendous problem around the world. India is not alone. This is what native forests looked like about 8,000 years ago. This is all we have left today. This is causing ecosystems to collapse around the world, with over 60% already near or past the point of no return. And this is causing a major loss in species, plants and animals. This is what we are in now is the sixth wave of species extinction. And unlike the previous five, which were due to natural causes, all of the causes of this wave are our activities. The most damaging of those activities is deforestation. It is the single greatest cause for species extinction, but it is also the single largest clause for climate change. How bad is the situation? We lose an acre and a half of rainforest every second. And rainforest trees are critical because they absorb 80% more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than temperate forest trees. Plus, the process of transpiration and the shade of trees helps to bring down temperatures. This is why the UN has said, if we lose our forests, we lose our fight against climate change. But as importantly, if we lose our forests, we lose our water. All of us know what kind of a summer we have gone through India there's almost no place in India that has not been touched by drought and record high temperatures. And the greatest cause of this drought is, again, deforestation. It is the number one threat in the Western Ghats. And I will remind everyone here in Bangalore, almost all the rivers 
that provide water to the plains areas, including Bangalore, have their origin in the Western Cots. In our district alone, from a forest cover of 86% in the late 1970s, it has dropped to only 16%. If you want a healthy ecosystem to survive and thrive, you need a minimum of 50% forest. Today, globally, we have less than 50% forest around the earth. So pictures like this from Hyderabad and Ahmedabad are happening also in northern India, but also in other countries as the Himalayan, Himalayan glaciers melt due to deforestation as well as climate change. This truly is a global water crisis with a billion people already lacking access to fresh water and over half the population of the earth at risk of violent conflict over water. So what do we do? And it's really a very straightforward answer. We protect and expand our forests. We stitch them together as we have done with Sai Sanctuary using the private forest sanctuary concept to stitch back together the government forests to build buffer zones of forest around the government forests and increase our forest areas. It has been said that if there is something wrong, those who have the ability to act have the responsibility to act. Everyone sitting in this room has the ability to act, either as an individual or as groups, families, friends, working with NGOs, businesses. Major, major responsibility to act because if you don't act, without our forests, we have no rainfall. Without our rainfall, we have no water. Without our water, we can do no activity of life. In fact, there is no life. And it is our duty to act, as put forth by the Constitution of India, as it says, it is the duty of every citizen to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests, rivers, lakes, and wildlife, and to have compassion for living creatures. We can help nature recover. And here's an example of how it was done. This is what New England in the U.S. looked like at the end of the 1800s. This is what the same area looks like today. This is because everyone took the situation seriously. They recognized we cannot live without our water. And they worked together and helped the government as well. And businesses got involved as well. So it can be done. This is what we have been doing at Sai Sanctuary, protecting the forest, bringing back the wildlife in order to ensure our freshwater supplies so that our home is secure for the next generation. So there's adequate food and water for all species, all species, including the next generation of humans as well. I have another dream. And in that dream, I see biological corridors, forest corridors, connecting all the fragments of forest in India from north to south and east to west. And I see the wildlife moving freely in these corridors. And I see the monsoon rains, the monsoon clouds following these green corridors like green highways, giving rainfall to everyone for every activity of life. 
and I see these forest corridors going beyond India's borders to join with forest corridors from other countries around the world, re-greening and rewilding Mother Earth, the only home we have, and the mother of us all. We ask you to help us in transforming this dream into a reality as well. Thank you so much. You have been a wonderful audience. Thank you.